Section 8, 3, examples 2 and 3. So before we get started, let's go over the steps for finding a confidence interval for the mean. So x bar must be normally distributed, right? So we have to meet those requirements that we've been talking about. And so the way we meet these requirements is at least one of the following conditions must be true. Uh, the first one is just that the population is normal, which we often don't know. And so if we don't know that, um, then we just need the sample size to be at least 30. That would be a large enough sample. Um, 15 turns out to be large enough um, if it's not severely skewed. Um, so we can use graphs to look at not severely skewed. Um, so we'll see that in a little bit. Um, so the process will be one, find the mean and standard deviation. So they may be given. Um, if they're not given, we can use one var stat that we've been using all semester. Um, then for step two, we're going to find the tails for the confidence interval. So we'll put that confidence level in the middle and find the tails. And then we'll use the table to find um, the t-score, right? Because we're using t-score now. And then our formula for confidence interval we plug in. It'll be the mean x-bar plus or minus, so that's my two endpoints, the t-score times s over square root of n. And then um, before we wrote p is in the interval for proportions. So for means, we'll say mu is in the interval of the lower to the upper. That'll be our math notation. So let's check out some examples. So example two, a statistics class wanted to estimate the height of all male students at their college. They chose a sample of 35 male students playing basketball in the gym one afternoon. Um, so our sample size is big enough, right? 35 is big enough. It meets that requirement of 30. So even though it's at least 30, what would be problematic about finding a confidence interval using this sample? So pause and think, like, where did the student collect data? Is it a random sample? No, they went to students playing basketball. Do students playing basketball represent all students? I don't think so, right? So it's not representative and not random. It would be those bad sampling methods from back in the early chapters. We could really only make a conclusion about students who play basketball, not all students. So let's try a full confidence interval now. So we want to estimate the mean or average so we know we're in mean land, so no proportions. So really step one of all these problems, I try to decide where are we? What are we working with? So to estimate the mean of all rattlesnakes, um, we've taken a sample of 14 such rattlesnakes um, and we recorded their lengths below. So before we start, let's comment on the requirements. So my sample size is only 14. So since it's 14, right, which is under the cutoff, uh, we need to hope, since it's stats class, we can hope that the population is normal, is normally distributed. In real life, we could maybe graph the data and check if it could be normal. We did that back in chapter six, and we could also do that probability plot that we did in the tech project. But as long as, for now, we can hope um, and that way, if the population is normal, then x bar will also be normal. Since we're in stats class, it's okay to just hope. Um, so let's find a 90% confidence interval of the mean length of all western rattlesnakes. And then remember, this is just a way to check our work um, on the calculator, the sum of x squared. So pull out your calculator if you haven't already. And let's enter the data. And we'll do one var stat so that we can find the mean and standard deviation. So we'll enter the data into L1. So I'm just going to type it a little quickly. Pause if you want to take your time doing this or if you need to go find your calculator. And then come back once you type all the data in. Sorry, I know the clicking gets a little annoying. You can hear me clicking on the calculator. 
And hopefully we didn't make any typos, but again, we can check for typos. So we'll go over to one var stats, tell it to look at L1. And then we have this to just confirm we didn't make any typos. And you can see that we get 25279.4, so cool, cool. If that doesn't match, that means you probably made a typo. So I'm gonna go ahead and record X bar. 42.44, um, in case we don't remember, we like one more decimal place than the data. So that's why I did two, because the data has one. And then S, we like five digits, so 2.1457. So not decimal places, five total digits. All right, so let's go ahead and find a confidence interval. Um, so we're gonna find that T curve. It was 90%, so we put 90% in the middle. So we have 0.05 left over, and then we need degrees of freedom. So degrees of freedom would be 14 minus one or 13. So you're gonna go to the T.05 column on that table and then go down to the 13th row. And you should see a T value of 1.771. So I'm getting this from the table. All right, and then we just plug into the formula. So if you feel like maybe you can do this, go for it. It'll be X bar plus or minus T times s over square root n. So we'll take that 42.44, right? Our average goes in the middle of our interval, and then we add and subtract the error on the left and the right side. So 1.771, we're gonna multiply by the standard deviation and divide by the square root of 14. So if you have your calculator out, um, I'm gonna do the plus or minus piece. 1.771 times 2.1457 divided by square root 14. So we get 42.44. And so since this has two decimal places, I'll round this, the error, to the plus or minus piece to two. So 1.02. Right, notice decimal places match. And then we'll get mu is in the interval of 42.44 minus 1.02. 41.42 up to 42.44 plus 1.02, right? The bigger number should come second, 43.46. And that's our confidence interval in math notation. So let's interpret it. We are 90% confident that the true, um, True mean, I guess you could just say one of the two words. Mean's probably enough. Uh, some students like the word average, the mean length or the average length of all Western rattlesnakes, all is an important word, is somewhere between those two numbers. Is somewhere between 41.42 and 43.46 inches. And based on that, can we say maybe you're super scared of rattlesnakes and you're like 40 inches is very intimidating. Can we be confident that the mean length of all rattlesnakes is greater than 40 inches? So I like looking at number lines here. So I like to draw the interval on the number line. 41.42 to 43.46. So we're confident that the average is any of these values in between. We don't know the exact average, but we're confident that it's in between these values. So is this interval greater than 40? Yeah, 40 would be on the outside, right? So we're confident that the average length of rattlesnakes is definitely bigger than 40. So yes, and that's because my interval, 41.42 up to 43.46 is definitely greater than 40. And that is our first confidence interval with means. So we'll try another one in the next video.